Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to talk about the capacity of pile groups, as well as the settlement of pile groups. So when two or more piles are constructed close to each other, they form a pile group. If the piles are constructed very close to one another, loading on one pile not only induces settlement on the pile itself, but it may also result in the settlement of the adjacent piles, and as a result a reduction in their capacity. A spacing greater than 2.5 diameters for floating piles is generally recommended. The ultimate vertical bearing capacity of a group of floating piles shall be taken to be the lesser of the following. So the sum of the capacities of the individual piles in the group or the capacity of a block containing the piles and the soil between them. So here you can see a diagram of a pile group and when you consider it as a block you need to also account for this soil in between the piles. The ultimate vertical bearing capacity of a group of end bearing piles on rock or on dense sand or gravel with equally strong material underneath can be taken as the sum of the vertical capacities of the individual piles in the group. The vertical settlement of pile groups is taken to be the product of the vertical settlement of a single pile with the ratio RS, which can be found from one of the tables below. So the top table is used for floating pile groups and the bottom table is used for end bearing pile groups. So first you determine the number of piles in the group and then, and then the pile stiffness factor K. You need to then determine the length to diameter ratio and the spacing to diameter ratio. And then you can get a value for RS. That's it for today's video. In the next video, I'll go through an example covering the capacity and settlement of pile groups. Hope this helps, guys.